Good morning, everyone. My topic today is uh, revisiting the origin of GLONASS uh, interfrequency phase bias and its implications to adjust bias signing products. As we all know, GLONASS uh, resolution is uh, difficult, especially for long baselines. Uh, because of the diverse frequency across GLONASS L1 and L2 bands. Um, the interfrequency phase bias existed at receivers and it cannot cancel after differencing <coughs> between satellites. But the good news is that interfrequency phase bias can be corrected. According to previous studies, IF, uh, interfrequency phase bias, <coughs> namely IFPB, are linear function of frequency channel numbers and it, is, uh, it appeared to depend on the receiver types and the manufacturers. And L1 and L2 share the similar or the same RFPB. But in fact, it is uh, the differential code phase bias that matters. Mm. According to Slivagen, he found that differential code phase bias are the physical region of RFPB. Uh, differential code phase bias uh, consists of two parts. One is the digital signal processing part, and the second is the hardware induced part. Uh, the DSP induced part are fixed values uh, for a specific receiver type uh, from the same manufacturer, and hardware induced DCPB are negligible for all phase observations. Uh, here we'll explore the uh, nature of FPB or DCPB. So uh, here is uh, uh, three questions we want to answer. One is what is the uncertainty of FPB DCPB estimates? Uh, question two is the receiver type specific FPB or DCPB suffice or not? Question three is one FPB or DCPB for receiver type suffice or not? Uh, the Two figures shows that, uh, according to previous study, the, man, the, the receivers from the same manufacturer share the similar IFPB, and it's, similar, it's also similar on L1 and L2 frequency bands. And to answer these questions, first we have a few uh, formulas. Uh, here is, uh, the first equation is the between station single difference for GLONASS satellite I on frequency band G. And uh, we should note that the pseudo range and the carrier phase have different clocks and hardware bias. So in the data processing, if a common clock assumption is made, then it results in the DCPB, i.e. Uh, differential code phase bias, uh, delta BG. This consists of DSP-induced and hardware-induced parts. The hardware-induced part is, uh, in fact, hardware and observable dependent. And the DSP part is uh, time invariable. Uh, so in theory, how, to, how do DCPB relate to different observables? Uh, According to previous studies, DSP-induced DCB, uh, DCPB is constant for all observables. Uh, example, for example, wide lane, narrow lane. But the hardware-induced DCPB is observable dependent. Uh, in fact, we can derive the formula for the ionus free combination and wide lane combination DCPB uh, the, as the following equation. Uh, clearly, if the L1 and L2 have the same DCPB, then the Ionosphere free and the wide lane uh, DCPB also have this, the same uh, value. But is this true? Uh, to answer this question, in fact, whether the hardware induced DCPB matters or not is subject to the uncertainties of uh, DCPB. So we have to first figure out how to estimate this PB and how to assess the accuracy we can get. So uh, previously there is uh, about one, me uh, one method to estimate this PB is to use wide lane and narrow lane ambit fixing. But MW uh, combination cannot work for baselines of more than 1,000 kilometers. And uh, 
there is no precise ionosphere data for wide area can be used. And uh, the method to assess the repeatabilities of DCPB over a long period is risky because whether DCPB is, should be physically stable or not is not known. So how to estimate DCPB for a huge network? An efficient method for a huge network is proposed. It can be applied to a broad or global network of stations, and it only uses the ionosphere free ambient fixing. Although its wavelength is only about 5.3 centimeter, but it isn't, it isn't a big problem on account of the quality of RGS final orbit products. Uh, we should also note here that only ionosphere DCPB can be estimated. Then we can compare this ionosphere DCPB to the results from ultra-short baseline. Uh, because from ultra-short baselines, we can easily estimate the DCPB on IR1 and IR2. And then we can make the comparison to assess the accuracy of the estimated ionosphere DCPB. Uh, so here, is, uh, here is the uh, experiment. We, we chose 20, uh, 200 stations in Europe and uh, estimate the DCPB for ionosphere observables in a, net, in a network solution mode. That is to say we fix the ionosphere ambiguities of GLONASS uh, in the whole network and then estimate the DCPB. And uh, we found 10 ultra-short baselines. We compare the estimated DCPB with the results from the uh, ultra baseline. Uh, this figure shows the result for the 10 ultra base lines. Mm -hmm. From this figure, we can see that the estimated ionosphere DCPB uh, accuracy is about 0 0.7 nanoseconds. It's, uh, it's quite accurate. And the uh, R1 and R2 DCPB actually can be quite different. Uh, DCPB are actually uh, observable dependent. And also we found that this PB varies with time, which can be significant. Uh, in the figure, the jump is related to the uh, change of receiver, uh, antenna, or the firmware. So the repeatabilities will then be problematic to quantify this PB precedence. So the, ne so the next question is, uh, do we provide DCPB specific to receiver type or stations? Uh, according to the figure, we found that DCPB can be quite different even among the same type of receivers. The range can be up to 30 nanoseconds. These differences are statistically significant compared to our estimate accuracy. So the differences are subject to not only receiver types, but also antennas, domes, firmware, and also observable. So how do these 30 uh, 30 nanoseconds affect ambiguity resolution. We actually can derive the formula and uh, we can say that the wide lens is little affected while the ionosphere uh, ambiguity is, is uh, influenced the most. If we don't correct this correctly and then we cannot carry out the ambiguity resolution for GLONASS long baseline successful. So what uh, observable specific DCPB to provide for the users? Uh, this right figure shows that if we use the R1 DCPB for GLONASS ionosphere free ambiguity resolution, <coughs> then it can clearly deteriorate the amb ambiguity resolution fixing rate. When we use the ionosphere free DCPB, the ambiguity resolution fixing rate is nearly uh, about 100%. Uh, but when we use the R1 DCPB, it, it's only about uh, more than 88%. So here we can get the conclusion that ionosphere free DCPB uh, should be provided for ionosphere free ambiguity resolution uh, because, it's, uh, because of his high efficiency to compute and also because as previous slides shows that R1 and R2 and violin are more resistant to DCP errors, DCPB errors. Okay. 
So finally, we come to the conclusions about the implications to RG, RGS bias Sinex products. Uh, DCPB, uh, differential code phase bias of sub-nanoseconds accuracy can be achieved over a large network by efficiently resolving the ionosphere-free ambiguities for GLONASS. And the differential code phase bias should be estimated and applied on account of their uh, station and observable specific properties, especially for ambiguities for short baselines. Uh, for example, the ionosphere-free ambiguity, which ha which, which, uh, whose wavelength is only 5.3 centimeter. And uh, the DCPB can differ significantly by up to uh, 30 nanoseconds, for, even for the same types of receivers from the same manufacturer. Uh, we should provide both R1 and R2 DCPB if possible. Otherwise, our honest free DCPB are preferred. Uh, the, their difference can be up to uh, 10 nanoseconds. Uh, for more details, uh, please refer to the paper on general of Thanks for your attention.